Hello again, welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to look at one of the features that many digital storage oscilloscopes have and that's the FFT or Fast Fourier Transform Display. So we're going to look at that. Uh, it's not something I was terribly familiar with and it's something I wanted to learn about. So if that's where you are you might find this video handy too. So let's go and look at some waveforms. OK, so let's just have a look at the FFT function um, that an oscilloscope produces. Um, so a conventional oscilloscope um, has a display that essentially displays voltage against time and displays it as a graph and that's the, the waveform that we're all um, familiar with. The difference between uh, an FFT display and the conventional um, time domain display is quite simply the FFT uses an algorithm to calculate a different plot and so what we see is a plot of frequency on the x-axis and power on the y-axis um, which is a little bit like a spectrum analyzer. So let's go and have a look how that actually looks uh, on a scope. Okay so first of all we'll look at how the uh, FFT display actually gives us information. Um, when I got going with this I found it a little bit confusing so hopefully you'll find this uh, helpful. So I've got my Philelec uh, FE6900 set up to produce a sine wave 100 kilohertz and uh, at 5 volts with no offset um, and she's just ticking away there so let's have a look how that looks on an analogue oscilloscope OK so here's that 100 kilohertz sine wave displayed on my Hameg HM307 analog scope. Um, got the time base set to 5 microseconds per division. So you can see here we've got 1, 2 divisions per um, period, per wavelength. So if you want to take the reciprocal of um, 10 microseconds, that's 100 kilohertz. So that's agreeing with that. And as you can see, we've got a nice sine wave display, and actually, that's pretty much uh, all we can do with an analog scope. So let's now have a look how that looks on my uh, digital scope. Here's the same wave firm on my digital storage scope, that's the Hantec DSO 5102P and what's really nice of course about uh, digital scopes is they give you lots of information so currently it's uh, telling me it's about 100 kilohertz and um, got that information straight away without having to do any maths. So let's now move to the FFT display and see what we can see with that single sine wave. Um, so I'm going to go into the maths mode and I'm going to select down to FFT there and I get that display which doesn't um, seem very enlightening. Uh, there seems to be noise but actually if you look carefully there is something here right at the extreme left hand side. There is a peak there and if we use the time base uh, control now we can actually isolate that peak a little bit. Um, there she is there and that's actually the 100 kilohertz frequency. Now if I um, reduce the power output the amplitude you can see she drops down there so that's uh, down to one volt and I turn it off it vanishes turn it back on so that's definitely the 100 kilohertz sine wave and so what we're now seeing is we're seeing frequency in the x-axis and uh, we're actually seeing logarithmic uh, scale for power now one of the other things you can do on the Hantec is you can change to um, You can change the voltage from uh, dB RMS to volts RMS and we get a quite a different display there so if we now just move the position scale down and turn up the sensitivity then we'll go there to um, uh, 1 volt per division uh, just bring that down to there so there's your 100 kilohertz displayed in volts. The reason we've suddenly lost all the noise is simply the um, the scale. If we uh, increase the scale, um, you would eventually, in fact, you can't get the sensitivity. But the logarithm—that's the effect of um, a linear scale versus a, a logarithmic scale. So no question at all there that we are actually seeing 
uh, a signal in the frequency domain. Um, so that's actually uh, quite a handy facility. So we'll go back to um, the DBRMS and just reposition it so you can see it there. So that's the, the, the noise floor. Remember, and of course, the scale here now is logarithmic. Okay, there's our 100 kilohertz display, and if I now change that to a square wave, relatively what you can see there is uh, the obvious square wave form. And if I turn the intensity up, you can actually see the um, rise and the fall time of the waves. So here we are back looking at the um, FFT display on the digital scope, and I'm going to um, just alter the time base control there so that you can uh, see the, the peak. I'm still on uh, sine wave at the moment and now I'm going to go to square wave and straight away you saw some more peaks appear. If I just adjust that a little bit you'll see uh, a few more hopefully. Um, so I'll just go back to sine wave. So there's, there's the fundamental frequency at 100 kilohertz and as soon as I start producing a square wave Straight away you start to see lots more spikes and I'm sure you've probably already worked out that's the harmonics um, on the uh, uh, sharp edges of the wave. And so straight away you can see that as the further away it gets from the fundamental so the energy level begins to, to drop down. Remembering of course here you're seeing a, a logarithmic scale. So if you just hop on to... Um, a linear scale, we'll just bring that down so we're now back on voltage and I'm going to just turn up the sensitivity so you can see there that let's just tweak that to get something seeable, there you go, yeah so there's your fundamental and then you've got your harmonics um, tailing off fairly rapidly into the distance but nonetheless you know certainly well above uh, one megahertz there so that's um, uh, conventional frequency on the display. Now let's have a look um, at uh, what happens when you use a sweeping waveform. Okay now I've asked the function generator to produce a swept wave. It's running from uh, about 100 kilohertz up to 2 megahertz and a period of one second and you can see the shortening of the wavelength there as the sweep uh, keeps repeating itself and that's uh, what you see on the analog. Okay, so here's the same display on the digital scope, and you've obviously got the same uh, effect going on. So let's now go to um, FFT display. Uh, we'll hop down to FFT there, and you can't see it terribly well, but again, just at the side there, we've got a little bit of movement on that, that peak. So let's now uh, move that peak out, and what you can see there is the frequency sweep um, going across the screen. So obviously that's hopefully giving you some idea of uh, what's going on with the display of uh, frequency. So it's sort of like a spectrum analyzer. Okay so let's look how we can make use of the FFT display to explore what's going on uh, with our circuits. So what we're essentially going to do is um, connect a noise source and the noise source is essentially a very wide band source of, source of noise. In this case I'm going to use the, the, one, the kit that I built, the M0BMN noise source. Uh, up the top there you can see a link to a video about building that kit if you want to go and have a look at that. And uh, that's going to be then connected to the oscilloscope and in the middle I'm going to have a conventional coil and capacitor in parallel producing what's often called a tank circuit. So here we get from the noise source we're going to have uh, a random noise which will hopefully look something like that on the FFT display. The tank circuit has a resonant frequency and I've just uh, illustrated that there with the, the bell curve and adjusting the variable uh, inductance will hopefully move the center point of, of that of that curve and we should be able to observe that uh, on the oscilloscope um, using the FFT display. So let's go and have a look how that um, how that appears in practice. Okay well this is the output of the noise generator um, 
just uh, in conventional oscilloscope mode with the x-axis is time and the y-axis is voltage and now I'm going to enable the um, FFT mode by entering the maths menu and now what you can see um, is frequency and power level going up um, now I've currently got the noise generator just connected directly to the scope I'm now going to introduce that uh, parallel tuned circuit um, in parallel with the scope and the noise generator like so and immediately you can see that very obvious peak there um, centered roughly in the middle and that's the resonance uh, of that uh, tuned circuit displayed um, in the frequency domain. So to ascertain um, how much uh, variation we've got with that uh, little tuned uh, little tune coil uh, what we can now do is uh, select some cursors and we're going to choose frequency as the type of cursor and so the first one uh, is in the centre there which is roughly um, about the middle of the of the slug in the coil so now I'm going to tune the, the coil slug up to its maximum extent at the top and as you can see it's moving across there and that's about as far as it'll go so now what I'm going to do is just quickly select that right hand cursor there that's not quite what I wanted but there we go that's that's rough that's set roughly on the um, on the peak and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it back down so you can see the peak moving across and I'm going to wind it back down as far as I can and when I see it starting to come back up I'll back off a little bit yeah I think it's starting to go back up there so we'll back off and that realistically there which is roughly the center of the, the display is about as about as low as it gets so I'm just going to tweak that left hand cursor a little bit just to give you some idea so frequency is displayed there um, lowest frequency was about 63.1 kilohertz highest frequency is about 90.2 kilohertz so that um, that coil is able to tune the moving the slug up and down to its maximum is able to tune the resonant frequency of that uh, tuned circuit roughly about uh, 27 kilohertz something like that um, so there you go that's uh, the scope displaying um, frequency and uh, domain rather than uh, than time okay so now I'm going to repeat uh, what I've just done for you at this time the display you're looking at is that of the tiny SA um, which is that uh, tube and tearful spectrum analyzer so this is most definitely displaying frequency across the x-axis and I've got it sweeping from 40 kilohertz uh, to 120 kilohertz and currently I've got the noise generator connected directly to the output without the tune circuit so I'm going to introduce the tune circuit now in parallel is exactly as I did before and you should when the display settles down um, hopefully in a couple of sweeps time you should start to see it um, responding to that just taking a moment or two to, to get there um, but you're starting to see that characteristic uh, curve of the uh, of the resonance of the uh, of the tune circuit. And if I now I've got the slug roughly in the middle, so if I now um, tune that to the far end, working my way up, as you can see, sweeps are a little slower at these lower frequencies. As you can see, it's most definitely now moves to the right, and the slug's just about as far out of the coil as it will go there so we've gone across probably a couple of divisions I'll bring it back so you can see some kind of comparison and that's yeah back again so we've probably gone about three divisions or so on there which is uh, 10 kilohertz a division so that would make sense that's the scope was saying about 27 kilohertz and um, the tiny SA is uh, uh, giving us a, a similar result so that's um, uh, a spectrum analyzer displaying the same uh, the same response curve. 
Okay, well that's it for the look at the fast Fourier transform ability of my digital storage scope. So I hope you found it useful and interesting. But more importantly, I hope it's encouraged you to have a go at exploring some of the perhaps lesser use features of your own scope. And in doing so, a little bit like me, you'll perhaps learn a bit more ele about electronics along the way and that'd be great. Next week I'm actually going to do a, a long term review of the digital scope and I've got the Handtech um, DSO 5102P. It's been a year since I bought it. I um, bought it in January 2020 and didn't expect to use it um, quite as much as I have but then I don't think anybody expected 2020 to be quite the year that it has been. So it's been a good companion so I'm going to look back at what I've used it for and uh, what I think about it. So I hope to see you, see you with that one. If you've liked this video please click the thumbs up. If not you can click the thumbs down. Either way it'd be great if you could subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in 2021.